Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, this is the big one, folks. We are heading back across the sea to the abandoned mineshaft that we found in a lush cave. We had a ton of cave spider spawners in there, and hopefully today we're going to be able to turn those into a farm of some kind. Now I need to grab my boat, which I think I've left down here in the wood storage, and I need to head down there into the lush cave to figure out where those cave spider spawners were, because there are a bunch of them, and I'm not sure how many of them will be close enough together for this farm to work. Let's find out. And here we are back at the mine shaft at spider spawner number one. Now we're going to take the coordinates of these ones and I'd prefer not to do this using coordinates but otherwise it's going to mean an awful lot of digging around. We're going to take the coordinates, we're going to take the coordinates of all of the other cave spider spawners as well and we're going to compare the coordinates in terms of x and z values. So remember that we need to be within a 16 block radius of a monster spawner for it to activate, meaning that if any of these blocks are more more than 32 blocks away from each other, it's probably not going to happen for us. So I think it's time to go around this entire structure, find the spawners, and then we'll subtract the x coordinates from each other to hopefully get a value that is less than 32. And then of course we'll do the same for the z coordinates, because if they're more than 32 blocks away on the z axis, that's not going to work either. Having come back to the entrance, I also noticed there's another block of deep slate coal here, so we can find one of those on camera for once, whoa, and end up getting flooded out of this cave if we're not too careful. But what I'm really looking for actually is a little bit of iron, because while we're here we might as well gather some cobwebs. Instead of breaking the cobwebs with a sword and turning them all into string, we can actually break them with shears and get the cobwebs themselves. These are one of the few things which don't actually need silk touch in order to obtain them and it's kind of nice to have them because cobwebs have that property of you having to walk super slow as you travel through them. The same is true of other mobs and we can potentially use these for some traps and other bits and pieces later. And these cave spider spawner corridors are absolutely full of them so we might as well gather them up while we're getting the coordinates of each of these spawners. So I've got the coordinates of five separate spawners in this mineshaft and just by the amount of looking around I had to do I'm fairly certain that most of them aren't within range of each other but there could be a few that are. So I started to compare the coordinates and the uh, x coordinate of this spawner here which is at negative 286 is relatively close to spawner 2 which is at negative 309. They're slightly displaced on the z-axis as well but I think we can give it a go and start to dig towards the other spawner. So we need to be heading this way, kind of southwest. We also need to head down about five blocks on the y-axis, so if we kind of dig in this sort of direction, we should hopefully end up with a line of sight between these two spawners. There we go, that's our second spawner, and I'll need to make sure I place a torch on it to, <laughs> to make sure that I don't end up breaking a torch around here and ending getting myself swarmed by cave spiders. Now this seems like it's a little bit far away as the crow flies, but if I step back into the room over here, I should hopefully find a place where I can see both spawners from and make sure that they're both activated. So if I stand a little bit closer to this one, then that activates and that one is unfortunately off. And I'm basically directly between these two diagonally. Yeah, they're both off unfortunately. So the 16 block radius for these two is a little bit too short because of I guess trigonometry, the fact that the diagonal line between these two is unfortunately further than 32 blocks. So while the X and Z method is usually a good way of telling which spawners are close together, you really need to get line of sight between the two before you can tell whether it's going to work. And sadly in this case it looks like it isn't. Spawner 3 on the other hand is just around the corner from this one here. So I'm interested to see if we can get those two to spin up at the same time. And at this point I'm going to have to start putting down some stuff that's going to help me store some of these blocks because my inventory is a giant mess. Oh yes, two and three is a go. I can stand pretty close to one or the other and still have the other one activate. So those two are definitely within range. Both of those would be spawning cave spiders right now if we hadn't lit them both up. Now there are definitely a couple more in this area but uh, the mineshaft winds around a couple of corners in order to get to them. So I need to see if one and four are going to reach each other or if if three and four do, and maybe number five is going to be worth exploring as well. Hmm, unfortunately it looks like these two might not work either, because I still need to be slightly closer to this one to be within activation range, and then that one down there isn't going to spin up at all. We're 
potentially going to be a slightly off angle, so we might be able to get maybe a block closer to each one, but that's not going to be enough, unfortunately. So maybe one and four aren't compatible, but three and four could be. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the feeling that three and four are close enough, because four is just down here right there, and then three is basically right behind this wall. So I think those two should be compatible as well. It's all going to come down to whether or not we can activate the fifth spawner from here. And there's our confirmation, that's spawner number three, that's spawner number four, both fully activated when we're standing right here. Now we need to find number five. And the reason why five is quite promising is from here, it's only about 14 blocks that way, but it is also nine blocks up. So I think that should be within range. It's whether it's within range of that spawner down there as well, but I think these three might actually form a triangle. Oh gosh, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> so it's right up here for this one, and if we dig down as far as that other spawner, which I think is down here basically? Yeah, easily. Right here is a spot we can stand where we're activating that spawner, that spawner up there, and that spawner down there. Three, four, and five can all activate in unison and i don't think we're going to hit number one which is all the way back over there but we have three cave spider spawners all going if i stand ever so slightly closer to that one but that's fine the other two are still within activation range and we can figure out a more exact point between these three where we can stand within equal distance of all of them but as long as we're standing close enough for them to activate that doesn't matter all that much we have what we need potentially a triple spider spawner farm. But that is potentially the easy part over with. Now the real work begins. Because we've determined that we can activate all three of them at once, now we have to clear out the area for each of them to maximize the spawning space around the spawner for our cave spiders to generate. And then we have to figure out how to get them into an area we can kill them. So one of the first things I'm going to do with each of these is create a 3 by 3 square of plain material underneath each of the spawners one block down, because that's actually going to be dug out later and turn into a hole where each of these cave spiders is going to fall. We're going to direct them in there with water streams, and then we should be able to combine the streams somewhere and allow all of the cave spiders to come and find us for the purposes of killing them like we do in the spider spawner. Then I'm going to dig out the area around each of the spawners so they have an 11 by 11 area. This should just be 9x9 nine nine because that's the radius that the spawner will actually spawn mobs, but I think we'll do 11x11 11 11 just to make sure that the spider's pathfinding doesn't end up with them climbing the walls again. And as with our other redstone contraptions, I'm going to dig out the floor around here. We're going to place in some blocks that aren't commonly found in natural generation. So in this case, we have a ton of cobbled deep slate that we could turn into polished deep slate or from there to deep slate bricks. We could design something cool in the floor if we want to, but I think we're just going to make sure this is functionally distinguishable from the other blocks around it. Because to be honest, the last thing we want is to break into this and have a ton of cave spiders pour out. And with that done for each of our three spawners, we've got one more up there and the other one down here, I'm probably going to clear out a bunch more of the terrain in here. And we don't strictly need to do this, but I think just for the purposes of you folks seeing what's going on in this video, it makes sense for me to clear out some more of the surrounding terrain. Also a fun way of getting hold of lots of building blocks that we can use later. To explain a little about how we're going to move these cave spiders around, because that's always one of the toughest tasks of this whole thing, we're going to be digging out a tube for them to fall into in the center of the room here. And while any water buckets that we place around the outside of the room are going to flow into this hole, we're actually going to block off the water from getting in here using fence gates. Fence gates are something we haven't really touched on in this series because honestly I find them a little bit useless for dealing with animals when there are other better alternatives. But fence gates, much like signs, will block water, except fence gates don't have to be attached to anything the way that signs do. So we're going to set up some fence gates surrounding the spawner here, blocking any water from falling down into this hole along with the spiders, because the spiders are going to fall down there, end up in a water stream that's going to carry them along and probably up about here somewhere, somewhere in between all three of these spawners where we can just stand, wait for spiders to accumulate, and hit them with a sword. I'll set up a little infinite water source here because we're going to need that for flooding these rooms out, but then I should be able to show you how we're going to flood the rooms. It's going to be pretty simple actually. Once the room has a full wall around the outside of it, we're going to place a single block on each of the corners. One here, one here, one over here, and one here. Then we're going to place 
a water bucket on top of that block, and that's going to flood this corner to the point where it reaches the fence gates without any blocks left uncovered by water. We do this on all four of the corners, and we end up with a room that directs anything that falls in here directly into this 3x3 hole in the centre of the room. Then we dig down a couple of blocks and we start digging a tunnel this way. And since the spiders themselves are only one block high, the tunnel itself only needs to be one block high, and that can potentially prevent them from climbing out of the water streams that are directing them around here. Here's a fun tip for if you want to crawl into a one block high space in Java Edition Minecraft. Unfortunately, this doesn't work on Bedrock Edition. If you overlap the hitbox of a fence gate or a trap door or anything and then close it so it becomes a solid block again, you can actually crawl underneath spaces like this. And that's how we're going to dig out the majority of these tunnels here. I'm going to dig down right here to give us something to aim at. Basically a tunnel down here where all of the water streams are going to converge and propel the cave spiders upwards. And since we're in a lush cave, this was completely unforeseen, but we have some tropical fish spawning down here, which is kind of nice, actually. Now, once we place the water stream in here, of course, the water is only going to run for eight blocks. So we need a way of either dropping the spiders down or pushing them upwards. And since spiders tend to climb walls by design, I tend to think pushing them upwards is going to be a better move to make. So once they reach the end of the water stream here, we're actually going to push them upwards onto a set of cobblestone walls that we'll place in here like so. Directly above the last block of this here, we're going to place a series of fence gates. And with three more fence gates blocking the water from falling down onto these walls, we can start another water stream here that's going to flow this way. Once again, one block high. And it looks like that has perfectly collided with the area we want the spiders to end up. So all we need to do is fill in all of this until we get to here. Now, right here, we're planning on having a soul sand bubble column. You might have encountered bubble columns when magma blocks spawn underwater, and those are the bubble columns that drag you down. But if you have soul sand here with a bunch of water sources directly above it, it will act as a bubble column that propels you upwards, effectively forming an elevator. And that's what we're going to throw all of these spiders into when they reach this point in the contraption. But since that involves placing water sources here, we need a way for the spiders to get through without the water sources from this area flooding backwards into the tunnel and pushing the spiders back in the opposite direction. So we're going to put a line of slabs here. We're going to put a line of walls one block below that because the walls hitbox technically pushes the spiders up half a block. And if we walk to log the slabs here they'll actually push the spiders forward into this block here and if we have some water sources on top of here they're actually going to be pushed upwards we put three fence gates along here to block the water sources from flowing backwards into the tunnel and the spiders should be propelled upwards once we have the soul sand in here once they get to the top here, the water sources are going to flow forwards like this, basically pushing the spiders into an area that they can't escape from because the water sources will be right here. We'll have some hoppers directly underneath them and over the top of them we'll have some fences preventing them from escaping while allowing the player to hit them with a sword, avoiding those poisonous cave spider bites. We're going to do the same thing directing the spiders from this spawner down. In fact, there's a little bit of a drop here already. We just need to make sure that we line them up with the bottom of this part here, and they'll come in from the other side using basically the same setup. We put some more cobblestone walls down here on this side. We'll put some more slabs there, and we'll have the spiders come along from a one block high tunnel over here. The spiders from this spawner will need to go round a corner once they get down here which should be easy enough to do with the water streams and I think in order to get the spiders from this spawner into the same water streams we're probably just going to have them fall out of here and end up in the tank with these spiders where they should flow down here join the rest of the others as they make their way back up here this is going to take a bunch of work and I need to go and grab a couple of other things like the soul sand that's going to form the soul sand bubble column down here but I'm going to go ahead and get that stuff done and I'll come back with a progress update when we're ready to start up the spawner Hey folks, welcome back. So we've done a bunch of setup on the spider spawner and this whole thing is pretty much operational. Aside from filling in the water streams that you saw a little bit earlier and surrounding the outside of these with deep slate bricks so that nothing ends up getting in and <laughs> there's still some tropical fish floating around in there, but we have wired up some redstone lamps now so that the inside of it can be made completely dark. There isn't really a great deal in this that we haven't already covered in our setups of the zombie and spider spawners. But to help illustrate exactly what's going on here, I'm going to bring in a second account 
via the local area network so that while I'm standing here and spiders are spawning all around us, we can take a quick fly through of everything that's going on here so that you can see a bit more of an overview of the mechanism because it's always difficult to see this stuff when you get up close. And so now we're looking at the world in pixel cam vision. <laughs> here I am standing in front of the spider spawner and inside each of these we can see that the setup is pretty much as you saw it previously. We've got the spawner there, we've got a lamp activated by levers from the outside. And going on down here, the spiders end up in this water stream. They end up flowing along the water stream, going up one block, coming into this section here where they are fed into these three blocks of soul sand. And as you can see, with water sources all the way up to the top, the bubbles carry the cave spiders up until they get caught in the top here, where the water flow will actually bring them over here. They won't be able to get out of here because the fences are holding them back, and I'm out there swiping at them with a sword. This is kind of the spider's eye view of the whole thing, I guess. And we can take a look at the whole thing in action if I just flip this lever and this lever over here. You can already hear the spiders starting to spawn inside. We'll go straight back to the camera account and we'll take a look at some of the other stuff that's going on here. So this spawner up here at the top, which should now be completely dark, so all of the cave spiders are spawning inside of here. And yes, they will get stuck to the walls occasionally, but once they decide to reverse their pathfinding, they'll end up falling back down. The spiders from this spawner end up going through into the other spawner here, which might occasionally affect the spawn rates from this spawner over here once these spiders get within range, but most of the time it's fine, they just get added to the water flow here, and they continue on down here, where they'll start to bunch up a little bit, but most of the time you'll find that they just push themselves through the water streams until eventually they end up going into the bubble columns. Yes, there are still some areas of the spawner where they'll get bunched up like this, and usually once they create a bit of a backlog, they'll start to push each other into the water streams, they'll spread out, the entity collision will do its work, or they'll just decide to turn around and start going the other way. Either way, in whatever case, they pretty much end up here. And I've added in some pistons, pushing down some blocks behind this. They're all sticky pistons so that the blocks will stay attached. And I can just hit these spiders without them going anywhere, without them being knocked back into the water streams like they would be if I was using a knockback sword. Having the pistons there to cut off any more spiders coming in also allows me to step a little bit closer to these hoppers and receive any XP without the spiders jumping out and poisoning me. And then we can release that and more spiders have already started to come up the water streams and might even have been taking a little bit of suffocation damage in the water blocks behind. Once again, we can close down the pistons, we'll grab a little bit of the XP, and I've been looking into ways that the XP can flow out towards us while we're standing here, but unfortunately, this stair block, even though it's on an angle because it's got a stair block next to it, isn't unfortunately going to let the XP through to us standing behind these fence gates, which are really there as a safety measure to make sure that we don't end up getting poisoned while we're standing here at the spider spawner. Despite the holdups, the spiders do make their way through the system slowly but surely, and honestly, working around this wall climb aspect of spiders is one of the main reasons people don't bother with cave spider spawners more often. They're just a little bit of a hassle sometimes, but in this case, the hassle is worth it. Because three spawners all in the same place like this allows us to acquire a pretty decent amount of XP, and I've already gone from level 33 to level 36 pretty quickly since we've been here. Now I'm going to carefully walk around the spiders so I don't end up getting poisoned by them as I walk past. We're going to switch on both of these levers which should activate the redstone lamps inside the spawners and we're going to make a couple of modifications to this while we're here. I'm not even using a looting sword and the drops are rolling in so I'm quite happy with the amount of spider eyes and string that we've been able to gather while I've been testing this out. In my inventory right now I have some glass and some amethyst shards because the two of these can combine to make a very special type of glass. We can open out one wall of this spawner here and if we wanted to we could end up placing some glass in there so that we could see inside, see if any troublesome spiders are bobbing up and down inside there and see when the whole thing was turned on and off. But as you can see right now it actually lets in light from outside this way because Glass will obviously not block light, and we need to have torches around here so that the environment can stay lit up. With the spawner safe and lit up, I'm going to remove these three glass blocks. We're going to take them up to the crafting table, and we're going to craft them together with the amethyst shards to make tinted glass. 16 blocks of glass and 16 amethyst shards on each side will get you half a stack of tinted glass, so it's a little bit more expensive than a regular glass is. But if we put the tinted glass in here, 
that's actually going to prevent light from traveling through while still giving us a block that we can look through. Another fun fact about tinted glass, you can remove it with any tool. It doesn't matter if it has silk touch or not, tinted glass will not break. It's just a little bit more reinforced. And that's going to allow us to see into this spawner just so we can make sure everything is still working in there. And of course I got poisoned <laughs> because the cave spiders had built up here a little bit. It was going to happen sooner or later. But I think we'll probably end up putting some tinted glass in each of these spawners. That way we can see when the spawners are spinning, check that the lights are on and that everything is working fine. And I guess we'll probably put another window in this side here. It doesn't have to be dead center of course. It can be basically wherever we want it to be. And from here, maybe we'll completely surround this side in tinted glass and that way we'll be able to see that this spawner is working while we're down here looking at that spawner as well. This lever here activates the light for both of these spawners so if we go up this line of redstone up this way we've actually had to boost the signal as we got further up with a repeater but this leads to the block there that's powering the redstone lamp for this spawner up here as well. If we wanted to, we could activate all three spawners with just one lever, but I figure we may as well just have two activated with one, and then this one over here that's sort of off to one side can be its own thing. Eventually, I might end up rewiring this whole thing with a master control panel so that we can switch everything on and off from one place, but for now, I think it's kind of fun to have a couple of different things to switch on. If we wanted to see that spawner spinning up from where we are though, we'd have to replace a significant amount of this tube here with the tinted glass. I'm not certain if we have enough to do that, but let's give it a try. We might have to risk breaking this out and getting a couple of things raining down on us here. There we go. Let's try and take out a couple of significant blocks of this. And we'll break away some of the granite here in the ceiling as well. We've got to make sure that we light a few things up just so we don't end up with any spawning spots up here that creepers might be able to drop in on us from. And there we go. From down here, we can see that spawner there. We can see into this spawner and we can see the spawner cage inside of there. So let's turn all of these off and we can observe all of the spawners activating at once. Also helps us check that the tinted glass work we did was good. And yeah, we can see inside of there just about we can see the spawner cage. The other thing we might need to do is turn on fabulous graphics so that we can see particles through glass and there we go we can see that the spawner in there is active so is that one there and so is the one inside of there so we should be getting all kinds of spiders coming through here. It's also fun to look around at the spawners and see what they're doing while they're active and it kind of doubles as a fish tank as well with all the tropical fish spawning in here now. We can see when the spiders are hanging out on top of there, and we can see the other spiders come down and push them in. <laughs> there we go. Oh, maybe the XP does come through the stairs after all. But there is a lot more we can do here because, of course, this place is still a bit of a mess. It's still an excavated abandoned mine shaft. We have spider stuff all over the place. We still end up getting poisoned if we walk too close to this area. I think it's probably worth spending a little bit more time cleaning this thing up at a later date. But for now, I think we're probably going to move on from the technical projects and next week we're going to be looking at villagers. We'll cover how to find a village and what to do when you get there in the first episode and we'll probably spend the whole of next week looking at villagers because there are some really deep mechanics we can go into there. But for now that's going to be it from me. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Rifts. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you.